Hey there crochet friends, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts with another fun and free crochet pattern. This time I'm sharing the Joan Granny Sweater. A happy palette and sweet little granny squares bring this long sleeve sweater to life. Have fun playing with colors and personalizing your new favorite fall top. While crocheting along with me, pull up the free pattern on my blog, tlycblog.com, and if you prefer, you can get an ad-free printable version for just a few dollars from my shop, tlyarncrafts.com. Links to both resources are in the description. Description. Now if you're excited to make the Joan Granny sweater with me today, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for even more free patterns, product reviews, and tutorials. Now let's talk materials. To make the Joan Granny sweater, we have to start with the yarn, and I used Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling from Lion Brand. It's a lovely 100% acrylic that comes in lots of gorgeous solid colors, including this sage, beige heather. I used one from their Skein Tones line, which is also Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling, and this color is called Adobe. And my last color was from Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling, and this is Mustard. You'll need a different amount of yarn based on the size that you're using, so use the pattern as a guide. In addition to the yarn, you'll also need a four and a half millimeter and a five and a half millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure, blocking stitch markers, as well as steam blocking supplies. But we'll talk about those a little bit later. Now let's get started. We're instructed to make our squares with a different color each round. So we'll work with our accent colors for the first three rounds. And then the fourth round is always in our main color. So I'll start with Adobe, then work through mustard and sage and do the final round in our beige heather. Round one begins with a magic ring. So so we're going to lay the working yarn over our hands, wrap it around that first finger two times, bring that first loop over the second, second loop over the first and off the tip of your finger. Now we can grab both of those tails and pull. We have the knot here and when we grab our tail, we can see that we now have an adjustable ring. I'm going to flip that ring up so the knot is at the top and now I can insert my hook, yarn over and pull up that loop. That loop does not count as our first chain. Instead, we're going to start with a chain one. That also does not count as a stitch. And we're gonna place 12 double crochets into our ring. Yarn over, insert into the ring. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again. There's our first double crochet. And we'll do that 12 total times. So here's two. Here's three. Here's four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine, 10, 11, and 12. I'm gonna lift that loop up and out, close our magic ring, and I'm going to join in the first double crochet of the round. So you can count backwards from here, or you can find that first double crochet, which is right here. I like to count backwards just to make sure I'm inserting into the correct stitch. So this stitch here at the base of my loop is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and these loops right here make 12. I'm gonna insert under both of those loops, yarn over, pull up, pull through, everything on my hook for a slip knot, and that completes round one. At this point, I am going to fasten off and we'll join with a standing double crochet for the next round. For this next round, we're connecting our new color with a cluster join, which is explained under the special stitches section of the pattern. So we'll start with a slip knot on our hook, tighten that down. We're now going to yarn over and pull up a loop in any double crochet on the round. So I have my yarn over on my hook. I'm gonna insert under both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two of those loops, just like that. So now we've joined. Now we need to yarn over, pull up a loop in the same stitch again, yarn over, pull through two, three loops on the hook. We're gonna do that one more time. Yarn over, pull up the loop in the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. We now have four loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. So that is our cluster join. Chain one. This next little loop is from our slip stitch, so we're going to skip this and jump right into the next double crochet and place a cluster. So we start off with a yarn over, pull up a loop in the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna do that three times. So there was one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's three loops on the hook now. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the same stitch, yarn over, pull through two. You've got four loops on your hook, We'll now yarn over, pull through all four, and don't forget the chain one. 
We'll do that for each stitch around. So the cluster, yarn over, pull through all four loops, followed by a chain one. One more time together, into the next stitch goes another cluster. Yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. Repeat that for each double crochet around and we'll finish up with a join in the first cluster of the round. I've got one more stitch here. I'll place a cluster there. There's two and three times. Yarn over, pull through all four loops, chain one, and I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the top of the cluster that started the round. Just like that. So that is round two. Let's move on to round three. Now, after fastening off this yellow, I can now move on to my green. I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. So I'll place a slip knot on my hook, tighten that down. I'm going to yarn over first and pick any chain one space around the circle. So I'm going to pull up a loop and complete that double crochet in that chain one space. Let me show you that again. So I have a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, find a chain one space, so the space between clusters, insert my hook into that space, yarn over, pull up the loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Now I'm gonna put two more double crochet in that same space. Here's one and two. Follow that with a chain one, and then I'm gonna put three double crochet in each of the next three spaces. So three in this space, here's one, two, and three, followed by a chain one. Three in the next space, here's one, here's two, and three, followed by a chain one. Three double crochet in the next space as well. There's one, here's two, and three, followed by a chain one. Now our next step here is to follow this with another chain one and then in the same space we're going to put three double crochet. Here's one, two, and three. Essentially what we're doing here is turning this circular motif into a square. So we just made our first corner. So now we can follow that with a chain one and put three double crochet in each of the next three spaces. Here's one, here's two, and three. Followed by a chain one, three in the next space. There's one, two, and three. Followed by a chain one, and then we have one, two, and three. Followed by a chain one. Now we will chain one again and place three double crochet in this same space. There's one, two, and three. And follow that with a chain one. We're gonna do it again three double crochet in each of the next three spaces, always followed by a chain one. Now we need to follow this with another chain one and complete our corner, which is three more double crochet in that same space. There's two and three. All right, we've got three sides so far. Let's finish up this side. So we're gonna follow this with a chain one, place three double crochet in each of the next three spaces. So there's a space here, a space here, and there is a space here. So we're gonna put three double crochet in each of those. So here's the first set of three double crochets. Oop. There's two and three. Here's the second set with one, two, and three, followed by chain one. And the third set, three double crochet in this chain one space here. There's two and three, followed by chain one. Since this is a corner, we're going to chain one again and slip stitch in this first double crochet of the round. Now that round is complete, I'm gonna fasten off and we can do our final round in the main color. This final round is worked in our main color. For me, that's beige heather, and we are going to join with a standing double crochet again. So I'm placing that slip knot on my hook and I'm gonna join in any chain two space. So the chain two spaces are here in your corners. I'm gonna start at this one right here. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop in that chain two space, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Now we're going to place two more double crochet in that same space. There's one and two. 
Whereas before we put chain spaces between our three double crochet groups, we are not going to do this on this final round. So instead, we're going to place three double crochets in each chain one space to the next chain two space. So there's three in that space. Three go here as well. There's two and three. And three go here as well. There's one, there's two, and there's three. When we get to the next chain two space, the next corner, we place three double crochet. There's one, two, and three. A chain two and three more double crochet into that corner. There's one, there's two, and there's three. And we'll repeat this around. So I've got a little chain two going here and now I can slip stitch in the top of the first double crochet of my round to complete my round. I'm gonna fasten off, leaving a tail just long enough to weave in that end. And this is what the square motifs of the Joan Granny sweater look like once they're all done. Now, of course, since we changed color each round, we have a lot of ends to weave in. So you wanna go ahead and do that. The one end I will show you how to do is this one here at the center, because it's gonna be very important for us to keep our ring nice and secure. Otherwise, through wearing and washing, this ring can work itself open and kind of ruin the granny square. First thing I'm gonna do is pull that adjustable loop nice and tight here. And then I'm gonna thread my yarn onto a small tapestry needle. It's not a big one, a little one helps. So once I've pulled that tail nice and tight here, I am now going to insert under a loop right next to where my tail is coming out of. I'm then going to wrap that tail around my needle twice, push that through and hold on to that knot while I pull. So this is essentially creating like a French knot like an embroidery, and it gives us a nice little knot here at the base of our work. That's going to make sure that that center loop never, ever, ever comes out. I'm then going to weave in this end way more securely than I would any other end, because again, that is going to play towards making sure this knot never comes out. Okay, so that end is done. I'm going to just Fasten off right here close to the work, making sure I don't cut my actual granny square. After you weave in all of your ends, I do recommend blocking your individual squares. So this is the one we just completed. You can see that my edges are a little wonky. It's not really trying to square itself out. It's still kind of circular. Whereas this one is complete and blocked. I have nice, clean, straight edges along the sides. All of my ends are weaved in and everything looks great. So let me give you a quick demo of how to block your individual squares. When blocking my squares, I like to use these interlocking foam mats. I got these ones from Knit Picks and I really like them because they have one inch squares on them so I can make sure that my finished squares come out to the correct dimensions. I'm gonna use these rust proof T-pins, open those up, and I want to block my full size squares to five inches. For the smaller squares that go on the bottom of your sweater, you're gonna block those to about four and a half inches. So I'm going to start by pinning my corners and counting up one, two, three, four, five inches. I'll grab another pin, stick that in the corner. Another pin headed this way, one, two, three, four, five inches. So I do have to stretch it a little bit and that's all right. And then I have one more corner here going this way. Now, if you need to put pins on your side edges here, maybe they're bowing in a little bit. If you want to stretch them out, you certainly can, but mine is kind of falling into place pretty well here. In the background, I am going to start up my garment steamer. I can just press this button down here and I know it's heating up because this light is flashing. As soon as it's done flashing, that means that my garment steamer is hot and I'm ready to steam my square. The light is solid now, so I'm ready to start steaming. I like this one because it's got a trigger on it and when I push the trigger down, it can hold and do continuous steam. So now I'm going to steam my square and I'm getting close, but definitely not not touching the square because the hot plate on this could actually melt the yarn since this is 100% acrylic. So I'm getting close but not touching and I want to make sure my square is nice and damp. And you'll want to do this for each of your squares. I recommend making them all and then pinning them all down and blocking them all at once. Ooh, sorry, got a little steamy there. So now it's nice and damp and I'll just let that dry completely. While the squares are drying, we can move on to making our triangle. We'll be following the same color sequence as our squares, doing the first three rows in our accent 
colors and then the last row is going to be in our main color so for this first row i am doing my brown color my adobe color and i am starting with the magic ring i'm going to flip that loop up so the knot is at the top insert yarn over and pull up my loop which of course does not count as a stitch i'm going to chain three one two, three, that does count as a stitch. That's our first double crochet. And then I'm gonna put seven more double crochet into the ring. So insert, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two and two for one. Here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five, here's six, and seven. So I'll have eight total double crochet in my ring. Let's give that a quick count. So at the base of my loop, I have my first double crochet here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is that starting chain three. Now I can close my ring and you can see it kind of creates more like a half moon as opposed to an entire circle. I'll then fasten off and we can add our second color. So we'll be joining with a standing double crochet. I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and join with that standing double crochet in the first double crochet of this row. So without turning my work, I'm going to find that first double crochet, which is going to be the top of this chain three and join with a standing double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the top of that chain three. I'll yarn over, pull up the loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And I'm going to follow this with a chain one. Now I'm going to cluster in the next stitch. So this double crochet here, remember that's a yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll do that three times. So there was one, here's two, and here's three. Yarn over, pull through all four loops, and we'll follow that with a chain one. And we'll do that for each double crochet around to the last double crochet. So here we go. Cluster in the next stitch, followed by a chain one, cluster in the following stitch, followed by a chain one. And now in this last stitch, we're going to place a double crochet, and then we can fasten off. Let's move on to row three. For row three, I have my last accent color. I'm joining with a standing double crochet again, so I'm making my slip knot to place on my hook, and I'm going to join with a standing double crochet in the first stitch of the row. Yarn over, pull up a loop in this first double crochet, and complete the double crochet from here. I'll follow that with a chain one and place three double crochet in the next chain space, which is right here, just after that first double crochet. So three double crochet go here. There's one, two, and three. I'm going to follow that with a chain one and I'm going to place three double crochet followed by a chain one in each of the next two spaces. So here's one, followed by a chain one and two. followed by a chain one. In the next space, I'm gonna do three double crochets, a chain two, three double crochets, followed by a chain one. So this is going to be my corner. So three double crochet go here, there's two and three, followed by a chain two, three more double crochet here. There's one, two, and three. And I'll follow that with a chain one. And now I'm gonna put three double crochet followed by a chain one in each of the next three chain one spaces. So don't forget there's one right here as well. So three double crochet in this space. There's one, there's two, and three. Followed by a chain one. Here's one, two, and three. Followed by a chain one. And in this last chain one space here, we'll put one, two, and three. Followed by a chain one. Now we're gonna finish up this row by placing a double crochet in the top of this last double crochet here, just like that. And now we can fasten off and do our final row, which is worked in our main color. We're heading back to the beginning of the row and joining again with a standing double crochet, slip knot on the hook, yarn over, and join with a standing double crochet in the first double crochet of the round right here. We'll follow that with a chain one and place three double crochet in this next chain one space. There's one, two, 
two and three. And then we're going to double crochet in each chain one space until we get to our chain two space. Now we're up to our chain two space. We're gonna put three double crochet, one, two, and three, followed by a chain two and three more double crochet here. There's one, two, and three. Now we're going to double crochet in each chain one all the way across till we get to our last stitch. And now we're at our final stitch and we need to chain one and then double crochet in the top of this double crochet. Just like that. And that finishes off our triangle. Fasten off, lift that loop up and out. Just like with our square, you want to take extra care with weaving in this end from your magic ring. But go ahead and weave in all of those ends and then block your triangles just like you blocked your squares. You should have five inches along these main color edges. And then we can move on to assembly. Our next step is to arrange our squares and triangles based on the chart for your size. So these are my five inch squares and then I would put my smaller squares at the bottom row of my sweater and then I would put the triangles at the top at the neckline. So just follow the chart for your size and lay your squares out as randomly as possible. Our next step is that we want to flip them all to the wrong side and seam them together. In my case I arranged mine and then I simply flipped them right where they were and started seaming them together. But you can do this in whatever way that you like. But we're going to seam our squares using single crochet seams with the wrong sides of our squares looking at us. So I'm going to use these nine squares as a quick demo of how we'll join together with single crochet seams. So we're going to grab our larger hook as well as our main color. I'm placing a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to grab my first two squares which are these right here and I'm going to put them facing each other. I'm going to join here and work in this direction. So I'm going to start with a slip knot in the chain two space of my squares and create a single crochet. Then I'm going to work through both the front and back loops of each stitch to create my single crochet seams. So I'm gonna insert into both loops of this first double crochet on the square that's closest to me, and then both loops of the double crochet on the corresponding square and back. Then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all of that, then yarn over and pull through these last two loops. And I'll do that for each double crochet across. So under both loops of the stitch, both loops of the stitch on the other square, and complete a single crochet. One more double crochet here, or one more single crochet here, and then I'll single crochet into the chain two space of this square. And now I'm gonna grab my next two squares, bringing the right sides together, wrong sides facing out. And I'm gonna jump right into this chain two space here at the corner. So I just finished placing a single crochet in the chain two space of these squares. Now I'm gonna jump right into the chain two space of my next two squares and create a single crochet. So now I've moved on to my next square and I'll do this all the way across until I get this row completed. I finished my rows in the first direction, but now I need to connect in the opposite direction. I know folks sometimes have an issue with this, especially working over these joins, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. We're just gonna basically skip right over them. But here's how you're going to join in this other direction. I just completed making a single crochet seam in those last two double crochets. Now I'm gonna go in the chain two space of the squares on this side. This is a pretty thick join here, so I'm actually going to chain one and then jump over to the chain two space of the next square. That chain one just essentially gives me a bridge over that ridge here, and now I can jump right back into my single crochet seam. So I'll do that for the remainder of my squares here, and then we'll talk about the next steps of assembly. Once you're done with assembly, this is what the right side of your work looks like. So you can see here ever so slightly that there's this nice kind of set of laddered teeth 
where the single crochet seam is. But since we worked it in our main color, it kind of blends in with the rest of the project. Now, when you continue on to step two of assembly, you're meant to lay the front and back pieces together and seam along the shoulders just with a single crochet seam, just like before. Now we'll move on to step three, which is only for certain sizes. So for the large XL, 2X, 3X, and 4X, 5X. So let's say, for example, that this is one of your body panels. You'll actually add a couple of rows of granny stripe along the side to widen the panel so you have the right bust measurement. And I wanted to show you the setup for those granny rows so you can see how to add them on the side of your granny squares here. So let me show you how that's done. We'll work here over these three granny squares starting on the right hand side. So we're going to join with a standing double crochet in the bottom corner here. So I'll place a slip knot on my hook and join with a double crochet in this corner. Now we'll place two more double crochet here. There's one and two in that same corner. And now we'll double crochet in each space between three double crochet groups to the next seam. So three double crochet go here. There's two and three. Three double crochet here. There's one. There's two and three. Three double crochet here for one, two, and three. Three double crochet here for one, two, and three. Now we've reached this area here. So we have our chain two space for our corner. We have our seam and the chain two space of the next square. I'm actually going to skip this chain two space and place three double crochet along the seam here. So what I'm going to do is dip my hook down into the seam, just grabbing these two loops, and I'm going to place one, two, three double crochet right here. I'm going to skip this chain two space here and place three double crochet in the next space. There's one, there's two, and three. So you can see how we've taken our granny stripe pattern straight across this granny square, worked into the seam, and then jump right back into your granny stripe pattern. Continuing on the side here, three double crochet in that space, three in the next space, three in the next space. Again, when you get to kind of this junction here, we're going to skip the chain two, three double crochet into the seam. There's one, there's two, and three. And then skipping this chain two space, three double crochet in that next space. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Three here, one, two, and three. Continuing on until we get to this last chain two, which would be the opposite side of this row. And three double crochet go here. So this is kind of the setup for extending the width of your sweater. So this is just kind of that first row. Then in the pattern, you do have directions for your granny stripe rows. So you'll work in your granny stripe to the length that you need to widen your sweater based on your size. And that is listed in the pattern. Now we will move on to our sleeves. Once you're done widening your panels, if you need to for your size, as well as assembling all of your squares and triangles, it'll be time to place some locking stitch markers to indicate where your sleeves are going to go. So I'm going to grab just a couple of locking stitch markers here, and then you're meant to use use your shoulder seam as the midpoint to place your markers for your sleeves. So clearly I don't have shoulder seams here, but I'll just give you an idea of how that is going to be set up for you. So let's say that this three double crochet group I'm going to say is my shoulder seam. For the size small, we're meant to measure across 16 inches. Since mine isn't quite large enough, I'll measure over 12 inches. So I'm going to use that three double crochet group as my midpoint. And then I'm going to place locking stitch markers at the beginning and end of this measurement. So if this is six, 12 inches is over here. So I'd place this locking stitch marker into this three double crochet group. And zero is over here. So I'm going to place a locking stitch marker into the space between these two groups. That means that this is the width 
of my sleeve. Eventually we'll seam this together so this opening would be my sleeve. So this is for the small medium size. Now let's say you're working any of the other sizes. This is what the edge looks like for you because this is where we widened our panels. But it would essentially be the same thing. I'm going to grab a three double crochet group as my midpoint. For you it will be your shoulder seam and then I'm going to place a marker in the three double crochet groups on either end. Now you might notice that the zero, so like the very beginning of my marker on this end, stops at a three double crochet group. I don't mind having a slightly larger sleeve, so I'm going to place my marker in the space just outside of this measurement. Same thing on the other end, the 12 inch marker is right here on this three double crochet group, so I'm going to put my stitch marker in the space just outside of that measurement. If you're working one of the larger sizes, you'll be able to pick up in this space here, starting with the standing double crochet, two more double crochet here, and work in your granny stripe pattern, placing your last three double crochet group in this marked stitch, turn your work, and then continue with your sleeve. You can change color within your sleeve however you like, but just work to the number of rows that are indicated in the pattern. Now, if you're working the smaller size and you need to do your setup row here, details of that are in the pattern, or you can jump back to this timestamp where I did the setup row for the larger sizes to extend the panel. It's essentially the same exact situation for this side for your setup row. And then you'll jump into your sleeve and work to the number of rows indicated for that sleeve. Once your sleeves are completed, you will join them together by bringing that sleeve together and then just whip stitch the ends of it. You'll whip stitch all the way from the cuff to the underarm and down the side of your sweater. Now we'll need to work on the bottom trim and the neckline together and we'll be just about done with our piece. I'm using this piece here to stand in for the bottom of my sweater so this is where I'll add my bottom trim. My first step is to grab my smaller hook as well as my main color <laughs> of yarn and join with a slip stitch in the back seam. So I'm going to insert my hook under just a couple loops of that seam, yarn over, pull up the loop, start with a chain one, and then I will single crochet in that same space of the seam. So that's my first single crochet here. And at this point, I want to place a single crochet in each chain two space and stitch as well as each seam between squares around the work. So here's what we'll do. We're going to jump into this chain two space, place a single crochet here, single crochet in each double crochet. Just keep in mind that there are no chain ones between our double crochets. So we're single crocheting directly into the double crochet stitches, not into the spaces in between. We'll continue around until we get to the seam between squares, placing a single crochet in each stitch. When we get to that junction of that seam, we're going to single crochet into the chain two space. We'll single crochet into the seam and single crochet into the next chain two space. That's going to give us a nice clean edge of single crochet stitches here. So I'm going to continue around until I get to the first single crochet of my round. I've now made it back around to my first single crochet and instead of joining with a slip stitch into this stitch, I'm going to continue on to work in a spiral. So I'm meant to single crochet through the back loop only of every stitch for the next round. So I'm going to find my first single crochet right here between my thumbs. Of course it has a front loop and a back loop, so I'm going to single crochet just through the back loop of that stitch. There's no join here, I'm just going to continue on working in the back loops only of my single crochet stitches to create my bottom trim. So I'm going to do this for five total rounds. We've done one round of single crochets already. This is round two, working that single crochet through the back loop. And I'm going to continue working in a spiral until I have five total rounds. And once I'm done with that, I'll come back here and show you what it looks like. I'm nearing the end of the round. I've just got a few more of those single crochet back loop stitches to do. Just taking my time, making sure they're nice and even and lined up. And I'm going to work until I get to my last stitch here, which I'll say is about right here. Since I'm working in a spiral, we can make this approximate. No one should be looking that close to your work. <laughs> All right, so that's my last single crochet through the back loop. You can see this beautiful edging that you'll have there on the end of your sweater. Now I'm going to just slip stitch into the next stitch. I'm going under both loops here, and I'm gonna pull through everything on my hook to complete that slip stitch. I'll then fasten off my work, pull that loop up and out, 
and then I can weave in that end and I'll have a nice clean edge here on the bottom of my work. The very last thing I need to do is the neckline edging. So let me get ready and we will do that together. Here I have my sample neckline and we'll work three rounds of single crochet around this opening. I'll need my larger hook as well as my main color and I'll join with the slip knot in the back neck. We'll slip our hook into that join at the back neck, yarn over with the main color, pull up a loop, chain one, and single crochet in that same space. From here, we're going to single crochet in this chain two space and each of our stitches along the back neck. I'll single crochet here at the junction between the front and back neck, and now I'm ready to work in the row ends of my triangle. My triangles were made with double crochet stitches, so I'll put two single crochets in the end of each double crochet row, as well as one single crochet in the eye of my triangle. Here we go. Two single crochet in the end of this row. Here's one and two. Two single crochet in the end of this row, one and two, two in the next row, one and two, two around the double crochet of this row, one single crochet right where that magic ring was. And now we can continue on putting two single crochet in the ends of our rows. I'm now at the end of my round and just like with my bottom trim, I'm gonna continue to work in a spiral for two more rounds of this neckline. So instead of joining, I'm going to work in the back loop of this single crochet and each single crochet around to three total rounds. We're closing in on the end of our third round and we're going to slip stitch in this next stitch under both loops, lift that loop nice and high, then we can fasten off and weave in that final end and all you'll really need to do from here is maybe steam block your final project to make sure everything is laying nice and neat and of course weave in these last few ends. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that you totally crushed making your Joan granny sweater. I can feel it in my bones, honey. Just make sure you give it a good blocking, maybe a little bit of steam while it's hanging on a mannequin or on a hanger and weave in those ends. Don't forget about those. Now after you're done with all of that, go ahead and put your sweater on, snap a couple pics and share them with me on Instagram, tag at TL Yarn Crafts, as well as hashtag TLYC Makers so I can see your beautiful work and then come flaunt your sweater inside of my Facebook group TLYC Makers. I cannot wait to see it. Thanks so much for joining me for today's tutorial and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!